Coming up on Mountain News this morning, the Commonwealth honored the lives we lost in the Mayfield tornado two years ago. And we take a moment to remember one of Kentucky's former governors who died yesterday. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Olivia Calfi. The time is 535 on Monday, December 11th. Now let's check in with First Alert meteorologist Shane Smith for a look at your forecast this morning. And Shane, we have a chilly start to our morning today, but a beautiful week ahead. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, me too, Olivia. The weather definitely on the cool side this morning. Temperatures into the 30s and it's feeling even cooler than that thanks to a stiff northwest wind. And that northwest wind sparking off a few flurries and maybe even a light snow shower or two this morning. Not much showing up on Pinpoint Doppler as we speak. There's a few flakes showing up there into portions of Letcher County right along the Letcher Pike border uh, heading to the uh, southeast and also a few uh, flakes showing up there northeast of Harlan over towards Cumberland. A few rain showers may be mixed in with that. As we go throughout the remainder of the day, though, those clouds are going to move on out and temperatures not going to warm up much. It's 27 right now on Pine Mountain. We're heading into the upper 30s there today. Jenkins dry as we speak with mostly cloudy skies, not seeing any flakes. Here's those current temperatures, 34 right now, Somerset, Middlesbrough, and Jonesville, 35, Manchester, Harlan. Good morning, Jackson. You're checking in at 31, 32 for my friends in Moorhead, Prestonsburg, and Pikeville, 28 down in Wise. As we head out the door this morning, those thermometers are gonna only climb into the low 40s today, and it's gonna feel even cooler than that. You definitely wanna grab the heavy jacket as that wind will be ripping at times today, gusting upwards of 15, to 20 miles per hour. Now the good news is, Olivia, we're going to be warming up a bit and be close to where we should be for this time of year for most of the week. We'll take a look at that seven day forecast coming up here in just a few minutes. All right, thank you, Shane. Two years ago yesterday on December 10th, 2021, a devastating tornado swept through Missouri, Tennessee, Arkansas and Kentucky, killing dozens and leaving a trail of destruction that can still be seen today. One of the hardest hit areas was Mayfield, Kentucky, where more than 70 people died because of the tragic twister. And yesterday, the city of Mayfield was inviting people to a ceremonial groundbreaking at Graves County Courthouse that will take place at the site of the one of the damaged two years ago. Dozens came out walking miles in the rain at the Mayfield Memorial Walk event this weekend. Governor Andy Bashir, EMS, firefighters, police, alongside everyday people walking together in unity to honor those who lost their lives in the December 10th tornadoes. After the walk, leaders hosted home dedications for five families in Graves County. Governor Andy Bashir says the storm destroyed lives, and it's important to remember the people who died that day. It took the lives of 81 children of God, and today we're honoring them, uh, remembering them. We're honoring everyone who showed up to help their fellow human being, and we are celebrating how we are rebuilding better than ever. He says his administration has already committed funds to build 300 new homes in Western Kentucky, and so far they've already built 158. Former Kentucky Governor Julian Carroll has died. His family made that announcement Sunday morning. Samantha Valentino looks back at Governor Carroll's long political career. Former Governor Julian Carroll dedicated nearly two thirds of his life to serving the people of Kentucky. After serving in the Air Force, Carroll served five terms in the Kentucky House of Representatives, including as Speaker of the House from 1968 to 1970. Carroll was then elected Lieutenant Governor, eventually succeeding Governor Wendell Ford. In 1975, with a record margin of victory, Carroll was elected for a full term as governor. We think about governors who faced adversity in their terms and Governor Carroll certainly is one of those. There was the Beverly Hills Supper Club fire that killed 165 or so people. There was the Scotia mine disaster. 
uh, which was more than two dozen miners uh, were killed. Carroll promoted the coal industry during a national energy crisis, later serving as President Jimmy Carter's energy advisor. In his time as governor, Carroll worked to transform public schools, investing heavily in teachers' salaries and eliminating fees for required classes and providing free textbooks. His work in Frankfurt didn't end in the governor's mansion, though. Carroll served in the Kentucky Senate from 2004 to 2020. He was throughout his career a, a fiery speaker uh, that served him as governor when he was uh, one who traveled the state a lot uh, in other campaigns that uh, he conducted. And then in later life in the state Senate, he never lost that ability to be a very strong orator and advocate for whatever he was for and opponent when he was against a, a piece of legislation. Shortly after his 88th birthday in 2020, Carroll announced he would not run for re-election, concluding his long political career. In Frankfurt, Samantha Valentino, WKYT. His family says funeral arrangements will be announced sometime today. A Morgan County Sheriff's deputy is recovering in the hospital after trying to arrest a suspect. The Sheriff's Office says Friday morning, Deputy Sean Pack was hurt on a job in a fall. He was then flown to UK Hospital. We don't know exactly where he was hurt or how bad his injuries are. Kentucky State Police and Fish and Wildlife are investigating the incident. Four men were arrested in Harlan County on drug trafficking charges. Robert Middleton, age 32, was arrested for trafficking meth and persistent felony offender. Michael Scoville, 42, and Anthony Smith, 45, were arrested for trafficking meth and drug paraphernalia. And Timothy Brock, age 61, was arrested for trafficking meth. Drug trafficking within 1,000 feet of a school and drug possession. All four of them were taken to the Harlan County Detention Center. A woman in Monticello was arrested after stealing packages from two different homes. Both of the homes were on South Kentucky Highway 1275. Misty Calhoun was seen on video stealing the packages and leaving in a car that was later found on Eastland Drive. When officers arrived, they found Calhoun sitting in the back of the car wearing one of the stolen items, a pair of shoes. She was taken to the Wayne County Detention Center. The Corbin Police Department is trying to keep people safe from scammers after learning about a phone call scam going around. A person or group has been able to use phone spoofing to make their phone number appear the same as the police department. Once they are on the phone with their victim, they tell them that they must pay money or missed for missed court dates. The Corbin PD says they would not call and solicit money. And if you receive this kind of call, you should hang up. December marks Safe Toys and Gifts months. As you shop for little ones this holiday season, make sure to check the recommended ages listed on the box. Many times these ages are set based on specific developmental and language milestones. One common safety hazard official warn people about are small pieces or batteries. To help avoid toy-related injuries, pediatrician Gina Robinson with Cleveland Cl Clinic Children's says it's important to read labels closely. I try to encourage parents to keep the older sibling's toys in one place and help the older sibling, you know, remind him or her to do that as well. So that when the toddler's roaming around in the places that are safe, those small pieces are not in that space. They're in the older sibling's room or play area or someplace that's separate if possible. Dr. Robinson adds, if you're giving something like a bike or scooter, make sure to buy the safety equipment that goes along with those gifts. And coming up, the iconic Hollywood sign over Los Angeles turned 100 years old over the weekend. And the forecast looking dry and chilly to start off the new work week. Details on the other side of the break.